What is up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2021 Tesla Model Y. So before we get started, we want to talk about our 100K plaque. So thanks to you for subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and as always, smashing that like button. Today, we're going to hammer out the Tesla Model Y, which is a huge segment for Tesla. This is a 2021, so there are some updates. So in this video, I will be talking about the front. I'll be talking about the back, the side. I'll be talking about conversation pieces like the Phantom Braking. I'm also going to talk about all the cool games that it includes and why this is such a big model for Tesla, because this is where everybody wants to be. Midsize SUV. I don't need to explain to you how important the family crossover SUV is, but Tesla will find out soon enough with this Model Y. They are getting a piece of it though because they are sold out for the third quarter. That is super important for Tesla to know that the demand is there, except the stock prices keep dipping. Well, there's no reality between that and this, but the reality is, is that this Model Y is gonna be huge for them. So important that they are continuing and completing the word sexy. Yes, Tesla understands that sexy equals seven passenger, and that is what is offered now in the Tesla Model Y. Now, if you watch our channel, you've seen that we have reviewed the Tesla Model 3 Performance. So what is the difference between a Model 3 and a Model Y? It's two inches wider, two inches longer, and yes, the most important piece, it sits higher, because that's what people want. People want to sit higher, they want to feel higher, they also want to feel what a Tesla is about, and they don't feel like they want to buy one when it's a sedan. So this Model Y only has one real competitor in today's marketplace, and that is the Mustang Mach-E, which we reviewed a few months ago. So if you're interested in watching that, well, here you go. Hmm. So there's two versions of the Tesla Model Y. The first one is the long range, voila, and the second one is the performance. Now, obviously we have done the Tesla Model 3 performance. That was a beast. So the long range does 525 kilometers of range. Now obviously that varies a little bit based on how you drive it. It has a top speed of 217 kilometers an hour. It does zero to 60 miles in five seconds. That is faster than the Kia Stinger, which has huge press. Yes, this is faster than this. It has a starting price of around $70,000 Canadian. And the second version is the Tesla Model Y Performance. Now this performance is a beast. The performance is a little bit slower in the Y than the Model 3, obviously because it's a little bit heavier and the drag coefficient is not as good as the Model 3. However, look how fast the Model 3 performance is. <laughs> this is not the performance, but this is still fast than the Kia Stinger. And here's the crazy part. The long range does 525 kilometers of range and the performance does 488 kilometers of range. Questionable why one would buy the performance or maybe it's the other way around because the performance actually has a starting price of $84,000. So it's really up in the air. Do you want a performance or do you want the long range? For me, I'd probably buy the long range only because the difference in performance isn't that much for the $14,000 price tag. Anyways, Tesla fanboys, comment below, have fun. Yes, and while you're commenting below, this is the 84,000 build, so this has all the latest tech. Actually, the owner, which is one of our viewers, thank you for letting us borrow it, has picked up this car last week. So it's as new as it gets, pretty excited to obviously review it. So if we talk about the front of the vehicle here, it looks obviously very similar to a Model 3. This is definitely higher. It does have a little bit different curvature on the front from what I recall. However, the headlights are probably the biggest question that people will have because our viewers from all over the world. These are not the EMEA headlights. Those headlights are only available in the Middle East and Europe. These are the only headlights you get in North America. There is no upgrade from Tesla with regarding to these lights. Now, as far as color goes, this is a $1,300 option in Canada. White is free, black, gray, and blue have a cost of $1,300. And if you get red, it's $2,600, it's double that interesting thing about Tesla is that if you want to open up the front, you have to actually use a screen inside. There's no pull handle and there's even no 
unlock handle here. You see most cars actually, when you pop the hood from inside, you can actually have a clip that you have to, have to push over and slide up. Here there's not one in, in typical Tesla fashion. It's very minimalistic. There's nothing in here. Obviously there's this little cover in here just to cover up some of the stuff, but there's nothing in here except for a light. Yeah. So if we move on to the side here is really where it's evident that this is a Model Y. You see, look how large and wide this is. It sits very low when you look at it, although the car sits high, if that makes any sense. Visually, it looks low, but the seating position in the side is high. But from an exterior perspective, these are the upgraded wheels. The cost on these wheels are $2,600 if you're interested in those wheels. Secondly, if you wanna get inside the car and the car is locked, you simply take the key, which is this. You obviously do have it on your phone, but I don't because this is not my car. So on the driver's side, I simply just swipe it here and then it unlocks the doors and I get in. This is the same as the Model 3 in terms of opening the handle. It opens this way. But an important thing to know in 2021 is you have dimmed side mirrors. So your mirrors are actually dimmed. The glass is actually dimmed, which wasn't the case in 2020. So the second thing they've upgraded in 2021 is they've added dual pane windows. So on these windows now, they are insulated and they are definitely quieter than the single pane windows on last year's model. Another thing to notice on the Tesla is compared to the other EVs we would had is look at this. You see other cars we've had have really thick battery packs, but this is not a thick battery pack in comparison to others. Like check this one out. Speaking of the Mach-E, this has the exact same length as a Mach-E. There's no difference in length. It's like a hair, like literally a hair. The numbers are so tight on a Mach-E and a Model Y, it's like one built one to compete with each other. And visually speaking, that's totally up to you and what you guys like in terms of style. But for me, I really love the back of this. This is really, really nice. So yes, this is my favorite part of the car. I just love how it looks so wide body. Like look at these hips. These are wide, wide hips, more wide than my 911 Turbo. Did you think I was gonna forget about sentry mode? Hmm. So if you don't know what sentry mode is, it's basically like having an alarm system on your car without the annoying beeping from the 90s. This thing actually records one hour before it detects perimeter movement around the car. So when you get back into the car, so you had an intruder trying to get into the car or look inside or smash the window or prop it open, it will record. All these cameras basically have a 360 recorder and it'll record all the movement around the car like security footage. So if you do want to charge it, that is where the charging port is. That is pretty cool that it has the Tesla logo right there and it plugs right in. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more of that later. Now, if you come in the back here, this is where the key difference is. Look at this height difference. This is basically at, yeah, I mean, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but this is pretty damn high. It goes right to my shoulder. But before we go in the trunk, I wanna show you the tow hitch. This thing does have a tow hitch right behind here and it can tow 3,500 pounds. That's important to know because this can tow. A lot of other cars in this segment cannot tow. So if you did get the performance version, you would actually have this dual motor underlined. And now I'm really happy they don't actually have a number anymore, like 70 or 80 or 90. It's very clean. I like the way it looks. And you'd have a spoiler if you got a performance, but let's check underneath, open sesame. Thank you. Look at this load floor. Look how low this load floor is. Really important. People that are buying this want to sit higher and put groceries in and out at a good height. They don't want to have to lift it up and over. It's very, very good. I can simply just stand here and sit. And this is where the fundamental difference really shines when it comes to a Model 3 and a Model Y. And because this is a fast back or a hatchback or a lift back or whatever back you want to call it, it's because this big booty actually goes up, which is important to know because you have four times the cargo volume in this than you have in the Model 3. Pretty crazy to know. So in terms of length, like I always like to do, it's got 43 and a half. In terms of width, your entry point is 42 and a half. And well, you can put whatever you want in here because this is basically all open. Pretty awesome. If you want to fold the seats flat though, you've got two little switches back here that I just pulled. It shows you what is on the right and what is on the left. There is no center one. The center one actually pulls with the left one. And I'll show you now. So for those that want to know the length until the back of the center console, that length is about 77 inches, which is a ton. So interesting to know is you can actually put sets of golf clubs in the back here without actually putting the seats down. Now, if you do have extra long drivers, you can actually put the center down, but the center pass through is really funny because when I want to pull the center pass through down, they have this little, besides having this little thing sticking out, obviously as a brace, they do have this little, thing to bring it down, but listen to this. It's not mechanical, it's electronic. Interesting, I've never ever seen a center pass-through that is electronic and not 
that is a, not a cost savings. It would be cheaper if you just had a lever to lift up. Yeah, electronic. Who thought of that? So for more trunk room, they've got this little leather lever here I can pull back and then it just slides into this position and I can let go. Look how deep this is. Now when I saw this first, I thought, man, for sure the seven passenger is gonna be rear facing. It only made sense, look how much depth there is. But Tesla managed to put two seats in the back that are forward facing, that also give you two USB-Cs in the back, by the way. But look at that. So you have so much room underneath here in this five seater. And then underneath here, you get some more storage space. That's there, not very much, but again, you do have a lot in the back here. And then on the, on the side, you have it individually. And you do have a cigarette lighter voltage plug right here. All right, so I'm in the back of the Tesla Model Y. And I wanna show you how these seats fold flat. It's not totally flat because these are bolstered seats, but they are fairly flat enough to put stuff in and not worry about it. Now, let's put this back up here. These seat backs do actually incline. They incline about three different positions. So I hold the button down and again, I know that this is fully electronic. I press it, it's not a click like other manufacturers. It's just hold it down, it's electronic. I can hear it and I can fold it back down again. So let's jump into the back. Yes, it definitely sits higher. There's no doubt this sits higher than the Model 3. Lots of headroom because it is glass, a full glass open panoramic roof. I wouldn't really call this a sunroof. This is more like a earth roof because you can see everything. But let's talk about the leather. This is vegan leather. There is no animal byproducts in this leather. Tesla custom engineered this leather. Now this has the full black interior. You can get a white and black interior. So white seats and white door cards instead of the suede. But there is something interesting to know about the white. It does mark pretty heavy. I like black because it's nice and minimalistic in here. It does have a light gray headliner. You see, when you get a performance, you have a black headliner. This is all white, so it's not as claustrophobic because in the back here, it feels very spacious. And one more thing about spacious, people don't really talk about this, but my feet, because these front seats actually sit on two sort of curbs, if I can call them that, I have a ton of room under my feet. You see, my feet aren't doing one of these and they're not stuck under the front seat. I have so much room, it's this, I can actually put my feet like this and I'm a size 10, five foot six, I'm kidding, I'm five foot eight and a half, you know, you guys know, you guys know the truth. Other things to note is I do have a completely flat floor. There is no center hub. There's no center differential. Even though this has dual motors, they're independent. There's no center transaxle or center center shaft. Now, interesting to note, there are also only two headdress in the back. There's no headdress for the third person, but I guess the third person would be pretty tight in the middle. There's a lot of room on this side and a lot of room on that side, but in the middle, it's a little bit tight but they do have a cool feature. They give you three increments of heated seats in the middle. You can't adjust it from the back and you can't adjust the temperature from the back, but you can adjust the fact that you have three different increments on all three back seats. That is pretty cool. Most manufacturers only have heated seats on this side and heats on this, on this side, no matter how expensive they get. We've reviewed cars in the $200,000 range that only have heated seats on either side and not in the middle. Now, if you can give this glass some more love, it blocks out all the ultraviolet and infrared rays, and it's so tinted that even if you had huge hard sun above you, it probably wouldn't be that bad because it's very tinted, but it's airy at the same time, and it's curved. All right, so I'm in the front seat of the Tesla Model Y, and here it goes. Do I get the SUV height? And the answer is yes. Look, I get the SUV height, and that's mainly because, as I mentioned in the back, Tesla mounted these seats on higher curbs. They just built two curbs and they mount the seat rail on those curbs. That's why I got a ton of room underneath, like a lot of storage room. Yes, how do I feel in the seats? These are great seats, as I mentioned in the Tesla Model 3 review. Um, everything else, if you haven't been in a Tesla before, is very minimalistic. There's not a lot to see. There's no heads-up display. It's just simply a steering wheel, a screen, and now, this model in the new version you actually have two wireless chargers you can put your phone on either side this is different now in the 2021 and the center console has a ton of room inside you can see a ton of room you push back it slides in but there is a piece that they've added for the 2021 over the 2020 model y for those that own a 2020 model y is the seat buttons on the side actually have a little outline of sort of anodized chrome or anodized or brushed 
stainless, whatever you want to call it. They also have this stitching that goes all the way up. This is something new. It wasn't stitched before. It's stitching all the way up. And there's a few other things that I'll get into when it comes to tech. But other than that, pretty straightforward. They do have these nice steel buttons now on the rollers. Oh, turn that volume down. Don't want to get copyrighted. But that, very straightforward, very simple, very clean. And let's get into the tech because that's how everything's operated, including the back heated seats, how to tilt and adjust your steering wheel, how to adjust your mirrors. Everything's done all through the screen. How to pop the trunk, how to open up. The, everything is done through the screen. So let's dive right in. This is the coolest thing. You see, we lost air conditioning yesterday and we were filming the new Bronco, which is an awesome video, I might add. And we were dying in here. But because this is battery, I can have the air conditioning going in here and I'm cool. Ian, on the other hand, is sweating bullets outside the car. But me, loving life in this Tesla. Anyways, let's dive right in. So speaking of temperature, it has something called advanced cabin control. And that essentially means that when you leave the car and it gets too hot, it'll automatically turn the air conditioning on just to keep all the components in the car from being frayed, essentially. And it does it the other way around. When it's super cool in here, it'll pre-warm the car up for you. Sort of cool to have that instead of trying to find your phone to remote start it outside. It can pre-cool it or pre-warm it. Interesting to know. So let's jump back into the screen. There's a main screen that I hit in here. It's the car icon and it gives me my quick control. So if we just start at the top here, I can select my exterior lights off on my front fog lights. I can adjust my mirror. So let's do that so I can show you how it works on this exact screen. So let's hit the steering wheel button and I use this toggle on the actual. And again, as I mentioned, this scroller button now is actually made out of steel. Look how cool that is. Left and right. Awesome. I can also fold the mirrors, I can have my window lock, and I can obviously adjust my brightness. Again, if you don't want to go through all this, you can skip right to the driving part. If you already know the screen in and out, we can skip right to the driving part because it will take me about five minutes. So next up is locks, and locks can be done through your phone, through your Tesla app on your phone. The Tesla app is pretty cool because you can actually see the whole Tesla ecosystem. So if you have a power wall or you have solar panels, you can actually all see that on your phone. You can actually see everything about the car right on your phone. Now, it'll show you that, but cool part about this is something called walk away door lock because as I showed you earlier, if I, as a guest, had the key card, when I walk away from the car, the car will automatically unlock. I can choose places to exclude that, like in this specific case, I can choose exclude home, but I can walk away from the car and the car will automatically lock. I don't want to pick up my phone to lock it, silly. You can also get notifications when you leave the doors unlocked or obviously the windows, all that stuff. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, next is display. I can choose my modes, what I want to have at night or day. I can have something called screen clean mode because all Tesla owners know this is fingerprint central. But that is not the case anymore because I can have screen clean mode. So I can put screen clean mode, rub it off, spray it, and keep it super clean. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. You have your format, your distance, temperature, all that stuff. Uh, the next one is driving. This is a really important for a driver. And obviously, you have to be a Tesla driver because you realize this thing is fast as hell. If you're not a driver and you drive it, you'll think this is the fastest car one would ever need. But for full drivers, eh, you can always move some more power. But acceleration, you can pick chill or standard. If you just want to cruise, you hit chill. Steering, you can have it in very light. And I don't know if I showed you guys this, but when I do the steering, I can basically just slide like that and the steering wheel spins around really fast. It's fully power assisted. There's no belt. It doesn't have a strain on it. It's super cool to have this. So also stopping mode. Stopping mode is something called regen braking. Essentially, it's like one pedal driving, except this is the stopping part of it. So when I come to a full stop or I let go of the accelerator, it'll decelerate automatically and the brake lights will come on to a hold. Or do you want to come to a roll or do you want to come to a creep? You can choose that. In this specific case, it's set to hold. So as soon as I let go of the throttle, it'll come to a full stop, which is pretty cool to have. Now, I can have off-road assist, slip start, and trailer mode. Because again, it can tow 3,500 pounds. So next up is autopilot. And autopilot is actually pretty cool because this is what it has. It auto steers you in this model. It doesn't have the full self-driving capability. But here's the cool part. It gives you full self-driving visualization preview. And that is because you have over-the-air updates. Tesla can actually give this car, for the most part, full self-driving capability, even if you did not buy it. So there are people who are like, I just won't buy it and wait until they offer it as an option because they even have options where they can give you more performance out of something like this over the air if you spank out some money. Now you can set your speed as a speed limit or the current speed as a percentage. So if the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour or 50 miles or 60 miles, you can set a percentage above that that you're happy going and they'll obviously warn you if you pass that speed. And you can set it as a display, a chime, 
Now this is really important to know, but it's got something called forward collision warning. And in this specific case, it's turned off because what's been going around lately is something called phantom braking. And it's hitting Tesla a little bit in the soft spot because what's happening is that the cars automatically just break out of nowhere. You're driving on the highway, doing about 100 or 120 kilometers an hour, and all of a sudden the car just stops right to 80. It doesn't come to a full stop, but it's enough of a jolt out of nowhere to automatically just break. And now some people have said it's with the GPS and the overpass. It seems to happen around overpasses for some reason. Some people even said it happens when a flying shopping bag, a plastic bag flies around the car in front of you and all of a sudden it breaks. It detects something and it thinks that it's a person or an item and it's trying to break or avoid it. So it's kind of dangerous there a little bit. So if you've had that issue, please, please, please comment in the section below. We want to know what's out there, what's going on, what people are, are, are going through. Anyways, that's an important piece to know, but we won't spend any more time on that because Tesla apparently knows all about it and they're working on it. So let's see what happens with that. So next up is navigation, safety, service. That's all fairly easy things to know. Adjusting headlights, software, blah, blah, blah. Now, the most important thing for me is on this screen is the fact you can actually unlock the glove box. You see, there's no button to have here. It's just a main thing on the screen. I hit glove box, the glove box comes down. And why this is important is because for 2021, the glove box now includes a USB. You see, it's hidden right here to record all your Sentry stuff and it is 128 gigabytes. And this is a Tesla authorized USB. This is straight from Tesla. It came with the car. You don't have to buy it as an option and it's hidden right here in the glove box. Pretty cool to see. Now, the most important piece here that I love to have is entertainment. Now it's got something called Toy Box and Entertainment. And my favorite game, and there's a ton of games here. So if you don't know what Tesla is about, it's about this. I hit Beach Buggy Racing. Now I did this in the performance one and I just love this game. It's awesome. It's awesome because the steering actually moves the wheels. So the car wheels itself actually move when I turn. And look how light it is. It's awesome. This is like dry steering cringeworthy. All right. Look how awesome this is. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> But look at the wheels outside. The wheels outside actually turn. And yes, I'm terrible at this. So in terms of sound, this does have a 15 speaker sound system. It's got four, I don't know why I suck so bad at this thing. Um, it's got 14 speakers and one subwoofer and two amplifiers for this thing. Man, this is crazy fun. <laughs> no hands, look mom. But most Tesla owners are really gonna wanna see how efficient this is. So most people would actually just stay in the energy or the charging range. Now, if you just look at this, this is from the owner that I took it from, and just look at where this chart is. He's projected with 76% left, he's projected to 428 kilometers, which is a lot. Now this thing is, has a lot, there's nowhere you can really drive to that this car can't get to. So I think anxiety for range doesn't really exist anymore in something like this. To get 525 kilometers out of the vehicle is a ton. So I think the mileage is really out of the box or out of the question anymore. And it's really about lifestyle and how you can enjoy that lifestyle. And I like how Tesla's dropped the Model Y right here, right now in 2021 with all these little upgrades. So total went on a rant there, but let's get back into the screen. So if we dig into the charging, this is what I can adjust. I can adjust how full I want to get the battery for daily trips or a long trip. So is it just a day trip you're going to use? Well, you can keep it shorter because remember, if you try to charge the battery up to 100% every time, you actually degrade the battery a little bit. If you just use the battery up to 80%, the battery will actually last longer over time. So that's why you can adjust how much you want to charge it to. Because a lot of people, when they first got them, they charge them and it only go to 80% and they're saying, what's wrong with my battery? It's because you have to actually go on the screen and you have to adjust it to where you want it to be. And you can also schedule it and you can also obviously see where you've supercharged it. And in terms of supercharging, you can go to the nav, very, very easy to use. So if I go right here into the nav, it's not gonna be as fast as it's gonna be when I'm outdoors, but it's, it's pretty much right on the money. If you wanna find supercharging stations, very easy. I simply just press this little button. It'll show me all the supercharging stations, including how fast they are. Like you can see, I've got 250 kilowatts here, 150. It'll also tell you if it's available or not. Now I have had people tell me that supercharging stations, if I have almost 80%, it'll show up as busy if it's not totally busy, just because they wanna leave a few spots for the people that are not as charged as you. Interesting enough, if you had that issue, comment below. So next up are the HVAC controls, and that is done by simply hitting the center button here where you see the fan icon. It comes up and I can essentially adjust where I want my fan 
to point. Do I want it in my face? Do I want it on the window? Where do I want it? It's done easily by just sliding it over here. Next up is schedule. I can schedule when I want the car to pre-warm up or pre-cool, done by time. Very easy to do, and pretty much most electric cars have this because it's all about scheduling. They're just really big on scheduling. So apparently buyers of EV cars like to schedule stuff. Nonetheless, most important thing here is something called dog and camp. When I hit dog, it's essentially leaving a dog in the car when I go shopping. Do not leave your children in the car. Straight up, don't leave your kids in the car. Bad idea. Yeah, I heard people leaving their kids in their car. Anyways, it basically tells you on the screen that there's a dog left in the car. So the climate is on, sentry is disabled, so all the outdoor cameras are disabled, and the car is obviously locked. But next up is camp. Camp is actually pretty cool because the car will actually stay on until the battery reaches 20%. Um, again, sentry is disabled and the alarm is disabled. Then when you walk away, you know, locking is disabled. But it's cool because you can actually just stay in the car, fall asleep, or essentially camp. Pretty cool to have. Obviously, you can't have this in a gas car because you will die of fumes. But in a battery car, eh, it's all open. Next up is also important and that is your heated seats. This does have heated steering wheel. So this steering wheel is heated and you can adjust, as I mentioned, three increments on all five seats, not just four seats, three increments. Odd enough though, they don't have increments on the heated steering. It's just one simple on or off, or you can just switch it all off. Hit the all off button, everything just shuts off instead of going pretty straightforward. So now it's time to get behind the driver's seat of the 2021 Tesla Model Y. And just a few things to talk about. One is because it is sort of a hatch, sort of fast back design, this one does not have any rear parcel shelf cover or tunnel. There's no cover in the back when you close the trunk, sort of a security glass looking in. You just see it, but that's it. There's no actual panel there. And that is a problem in terms of reverberation and sound. Now you have the bottom shelf there. Normally exhaust sounds re-come back and you can hear it. So let's just keep an eye on that for road noise. That's sort of interesting to know. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be louder than the Model 3. It's gotta be because it has no separation between the back road noise and the cabin in here. And it takes six feet for like bass to reverberate back. And just a bunch of technical stuff. Another thing to keep in mind is this screen. I want you guys to pay attention to the screen because you can actually see the type of cars that it is. It's so good now that you can see if it's a pickup truck, if it's a van. Soon you're going to be playing games with other people in the car saying, okay, well, what car is that? Just look down here and say, okay, that's a 1997 Malibu. That's a 2007 F-150, whatever it is. But it's getting so good that the visual display of it is cool. And also, when I put the car in reverse, or I'm driving, this is the actual color of the car. This is not some color that they just put or like a silver color or a white because they don't change the software. Pretty much every other car manufacturer we reviewed, this overhead camera doesn't show you the color of the car you're driving. So no matter what color of Tesla you get, it shows it right there. And obviously it shows you your brake lights and it shows you also the distance you have in front of you. So if there's somebody in the perimeter around you, it'll show you the distance of how much depth there is with the person around you in an actual instrument number. So like a three meters, one meter, five centimeters, whatever it is, it'll show you up on the screen. One thing I do notice for sure is how small the back window is. So for people that are not used to driving sort of a fast back type of car and they're used to driving a sedan, they'll notice this back window is smaller. It has a really small rear view mirror, but definitely behind you, it feels really, really far back. Just something to keep in mind if you're not used to it, that's something I wanted to point out. One thing I want to touch on is rattles. Now, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because of this big glass sunroof. So you'd think with the big sunroof, there'd be so much flex and movement. We've had smaller cars with one singular sunroof up there and it makes rattles. Like it rattles up here in the headline like crazy. As soon as the body shifts, the sunroof shifts a little bit. And they've had other manufacturers of sunroof exploding when, when it shifts because sunroof is too big when they first made these like sort of not full panoramic sunroofs, but like wider than normal sunroofs. This has a full screen. I'm surprised these things haven't grenaded, to be honest, because it's so huge and there's so much flex, but the rattles are not there. There, as I mentioned, there is a little bit more noise. Now that I'm driving, I can tell there's a little bit more noise coming from the very back again, because without a parcel shelf, and maybe they're listening, because Elon likes to listen, they've got something called Joe mode, and that's actually to reduce the chimes in the car, because somebody on Twitter was beaten up on Elon for having this noise, because his daughter kept waking up in the back from all the chime noise, so he put a mode called Joe mode right in here, so when you click Joe mode, it shuts off or minimizes all the beepings in the car so that kids don't wake up. So if he's listening, 
forget about heads up display like Doug wants. We want a rear parcel shelf so it can just make the back a little bit quieter. And it's kind of odd seeing the back panel there a little bit in my opinion. So this has really strong regen braking. So basically it's called one pedal driving. As soon as I let go of my throttle, the car immediately brakes, right? It's doing right now. This is all in one pedal driving. Now I can hit the brakes obviously, but there you saw it, 32 centimeters, 48 centimeters, it tells you your distance. But this one has active steering, so I just basically push that down. And then I still have to keep my hands on the wheel. So even though, even though with Tesla you can get full auto driving, you still have to keep your hands on the wheel. It still has to know that you're actually engaged in the car. You can't just put the buttons and fall asleep. Although you do see some guys on computers and stuff like that, but they're still, they have to put some sort of pressure on the wheel, whether it's their leg or they put something here to just pretend that they're holding the wheel. You still have to hold it with some pressure because this will tell you, put your hands on the wheel. Two pylons, pylons. How awesome is that? Pylons, pylons. Now it's set for max. So when it's blue there, that means the auto steer is on. So it's got cruise control plus the auto steer. And I can pinch this. I can move this around. Look how cool that looks. That is awesome. So apply slight turning force to the wheel. So I just apply a little bit of steering force. And when I push past that, it disconnects my auto steer. So then I have to reconnect auto steer. Hit it twice, it activates. You get the little noise there. And voila. So I've said this before about Tesla product. Tesla product is not just about the cars, it's about all the data and all the miles that all the Tesla drivers put on vehicles, but not just for the cars, for all the data it sees. It sees everything around it. It's constantly recording all the streets, all the signs, it's recording all that data. So in the future, there's no way any other manufacturer can compete with Tesla because it's got all the data. It can't just use sensors and expect it to work in real world settings. It needs actual data from drivers that are out there that are putting the miles on. We're basically a bunch of ants for Tesla, doing all the dirty work, and they'll reap the benefits. One thing I will say over the Model 3 is this is really, really good suspension. It's not adaptive suspension, it's just conventional suspension, just like the Model 3 Performance. It does have regular suspension, but it's a really good, softer suspension. It does handle decent. I know that it's a little bit higher, but remember, all the weight of this car is right on the bottom. Even though this sits higher than the Model 3, or as high as say the Mach E, it still handles very well because all the weight is on the bottom. Like it's like, it's unreal how this handles. There's just no comparison comparing a car like this to comparing a car like this without an actual engine in the front. The fact that all the weight's on the bottom has such a low center of gravity. And some people say, yeah, I mean, this one has Goodyear tires. Some people say the tires do make a bit of a difference, but maybe under full throttle like now, oh my God, this thing just pulls. Look at this handling. Wow, man, this is unreal. <sighs> That's all I need to know how good this car is. This is definitely the best mix of Tesla that I've driven because it combines the fact that it sits higher. It's got this ama insane amount of pull, like, like it's just like instant. Like just look at this, just look at this speed. Tesla, I mean, I'm watering. I gotta drink some water. I'm wa my mouth is literally watering every time I drive something like this. <clears throat> it is so good, man. It is so good how far we've come. Whew, just look at this. Look how fast this does it at a rolling start. That's why when Tesla me measures their launches, they always test it by not measuring the first foot of movement because the first foot of movement is the slowest part of the acceleration. That's why they can get the number to 1.9 seconds or two point. They're always trying to get it very tight, very tight. Okay, so let's go to 50. So let's just roll at 50 or let's roll at 40, whatever, 40 here and foot to the ground. So 43 to 80, go. 80. I don't know how long that was, but it was probably around two seconds. It's just crazy to me, man, that they can make something like this so good. They've just made it so, so good. Now, some of you might say this is like a one-trick pony where it just does that and that's about it. And that is partially true. Yes, it does get obviously a bit boring of just doing that all the time, on and off, on and off. And then no sound portion of it. Now, you do get plumbed in sound. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to tell you really about the buyer of this thing. So the buyer is pretty much everybody. It doesn't singular anybody out. You can have a teen drive this as their first car because you control how fast they drive. You can have an older person drive this, like really old, with bad knees and bad ankles and bad elbows and bad everything because it has the right height. And then you can have a whole family drive this because you can get it in a seven passenger and you can get it to the point where you can get Joe mode and keep the kid happy without the chimes in the car. 
I mean, the fact that they can always ever change with over-the-air updates give you more mileage. I have a friend that has a 2017 Model 3, and the car came with about, I can't remember the number what, the number now, but it was around 295 kilometers of range. And then he had it for three years, and before he sold it, he sold it when the car had 340 miles of, kilometers of range. So it actually improved as it got older. Now, who else can say that? Most cars don't say that. They always say that they get worse when they get older. But Tesla gets better because of all the software updates. It's just amazing. It's awesome. So for those that haven't driven a Tesla or like me, drive a Tesla every now and then, you just get this fresh reminder. It's like having this motorcycle that you haven't driven or this sports car that sits in the garage that you only drive from time to time. That gives us that, this like, this smile, or this upbeat feeling. And that's when I get into a Tesla after not driving one for a little bit. And then I hit the throttle and I'm like, wow, like how is this possible? But this is probably the most, maybe hard to say, but the most jaded manufacturer out there when you drive it. Because every time you drive it, it gives you this exciting feeling, but the exciting feeling will fade if you drive it every day. But when you don't drive it and you drive it again, you're like, wow, this is amazing. It's just got so much power. It's fast. It's got awesome tech. It's like, how can any other manufacturer really compete? And I keep asking myself this question until I get into a gas car and then I hear it. And I just feel like it's like the underdog story because this is not an underdog story. It might be underdog in the sense of get, getting the rollout to everybody to buy Teslas, but it's definitely not an underdog in terms of tech in terms of acceleration, in terms of handling. Like, look at this thing, it's awesome. You know, it's just unreal. And again, because this has dual motors, it's great in the winter, it's got torque vectoring, it's got all the tech you need in terms of like the motors and understanding where to place power and all that stuff, obviously, because this is as updated as you can in terms of where we are in the world of technology. It just, is just amazing. And it's just always makes me smile. <laughs> Oh, Tesla. It's just, I'm not a huge fan of the front end look. I just find it to look a little beluga whale-ish. The back end of this thing, to me, looks better than a Model 3, no doubt, hands down. I really like the side of the Model S. I really love the back of this thing and the side back profile, wide hips. I love this thing. This is probably the best looking Tesla, but it's a great mix of everything. As I mentioned earlier with the seats and all that fun stuff. They're gonna sell a lot of these things, man. They're gonna sell a lot and they already are. And that's why they're sold out for quarter three. And that's why their share price is down. Don't ask me. If you know the answer, comment below. Hope you guys liked this review. As always, please don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. Mike out, Ian out.